meantime, there's a new report that's saying that overtime rules are actually going to backfire. In other words, that the requirements are such that uh, bosses will say, you know what, I can't deal with this. You're a part-time worker now. Sabrina Schaefer says that's what's going to happen. Jill Asinji says that is not going to happen. And everyone take a chill pill. All right, so I, I kind of trivialized your views here, Joe. But you're saying people overreacting. That is not what's going to happen. Why do you, why do you say that? Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen because when we look at the productivity of the American worker, it's been increasing. And then what we have to account for is their time. I mean, this is a law that has not been updated or a rule. Sorry, it's a rule that hasn't been updated in almost four decades, I believe. So since inflation has naturally made it obsolete, it's time to update it. We're talking about protecting That's American workers. That's pretty dramatic, though, right? I mean, if you're a boss, wouldn't you be inclined, regardless of the inflation argument here, that, mm -hmm. wow, that's a big requirement. Well, I've yeah. got to do something, right? Sure, yeah. The best labor is free labor, right? If we could run a free labor, then everything would go well. well. I don't but think that's, that's not free the case labor, right? They're going to make <laughs> adjustments, right? They're going to make you, adjustments. You pay me for 40 hours a week. Anything above that is free if I'm on salary, according to the rules as they stand today. Up to 53000 now. Okay, what do you make of that, yep. Sabrina? No, look, I mean, the best way to ensure that we don't have economic growth or job creation is to make sure that business or government gets into the business of micromanaging the workplace, whether it's through, you know, mandating wages or benefits or other burdensome regulations. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of, you know, logical leaps to sort of see what's going to happen here. Businesses are going to probably reduce salaries all across the board in order to, to but pay Sabrina, for this to new But Sabrina, to Joe's cost. point, could we have avoided all this drama? And I see what you're saying about the government shouldn't be in the business of setting pay, and I, I think that makes sense. But if you are going to go this route and it is the rule, then, then just index it to inflation so we don't have this debate. And the, then the adjustment is so dramatic and so jarring that a lot of bosses do either get rid of employees or make more of them part. Well, that's one option, but we have to remember that currently the FLSA, the Fair Labor Standards um, Act, has already in 2004 established that people who are making less than $23,000 a year already have to be compensated with overtime pay. This is more than doubling that over in, the, in, in just a 10-year period. So it's a rather uh, substantial change. And one of the biggest concerns, and I obviously have an interest in working women, but one of the biggest concerns is this is going to limit flexibility and it's going to limit pay for all workers, which which is not the way to encourage economic growth. All right, Joe, you uh, don't see that happening, but do you think it could be a problem for Hillary Clinton or any other Democrats running if it looks like Democrats are in the business of policing business? Uh, no, I think it looks like they're in the business of protecting workers because a worker that's making $25,000 an hour that's working 60 hours a week is now making less than minimum wage in most states. So you can't You're talking exploit about workers a like year that anymore. And but but, but is, yes. it, is it fair to buy edict? just willy-nilly raise it, regardless of whether you think they can afford it. And well, the minimum wage is there to protect workers, to make sure you can't keep people in poverty and then continue to exploit your workforce. This is about protecting a vast majority of workers out of there. Now, here's the good news. Most businesses aren't going to be affected by this because they already have overtime laws that are in place. In fact, in a state like California that has such strict regulations on overtime right now anyway, a lot of people won't qualify. I think their threshold is somewhere close to... 40,000. So you're only moving it up another 10. But Sabrina, so this I is bringing only... those states that are exploiting their workers I, I hear up but... into, regula into, into a safer territory. Okay, but I could look at all this, Sabrina. If I'm a business guy, I'm just saying, get off my back. All of you, get off my back. Let's see the health care and all of this. Get off my back. I can't run a business without keeping If, I, if no one's it. watching Absolutely. what I'm doing, we, I can do whatever no, I want. They're not all nefarious sure characters, have... They're not all evil people. I mean, they're they're right. Right. a lot of these guys are and, small, medium-sized business owners. We, and they're let, not let me just point out one thing. That, that is that, oh, let, let me point out one thing, which is that that mothers are flexibility maximizers, and non-mothers are are salary maximizers and a law like this is going to hurt both of those groups so it may seem on the surface the democrats benefit from this but this is a tremendous opportunity for conservatives right. and by extension republicans if they are willing to take the chance and get out there and really explain that to people having a, a working mothers every hour paid for fairly is what this does course, it finally oh, recognizes that they have that both a, a home language. life and a professional you know what's life. good about so time away from their what's family good you about pay both of you. <laughs> You want the last word, but you're very effective yeah. at doing so. <laughs> Touche. All right. Uh, thank you, guys, very, very much. Thank you. In the meantime,